Good morning. I think it's time we should be starting the, the talk. Uh, my name is Lauro Moura. I work for Egale, and today we'll be talking about automated testing of embedded web applications. Uh, I met Egale since 2020, uh, working in the WebKit team. Mainly, I was working on QA tasks, and nowadays I work mostly on the web driver support for WP WebKit, WebKit GTK. And in the past, I have been always, since the beginning of my career, I've been working on open source tools, like the, in the old Nokia times of my emo, in the Python binds, and we had back in Brazil a port of WebKit called Nix. It was pretty kind of similar to WPE, a streamlined port, WebKit port, and also worked on the Enlightenment foundation libraries, also in the binders for JavaScript and C Sharp. Igale is an open source consultancy. It's over 20 years old. It's from Spain, but we are fully remote nowadays. We are a work around a cooperative, so we had a, a flex structure. We are mostly known for our work in the web browsers engines as the main contributors to WebKit and Chromium outside Apple and Google, respectively. We also have been working on Gecko and Servo recently. And not just browsers, but we are growing our contribution in other kind of projects like different uh, JavaScript engines, compilers, and a lot of projects in, in J for JStreamer and a growing number of contributions to graphics drivers in Mesa and the kernel. And due to our open source uh, background, we are very proud of our work in the different working groups to standardize the technologies, to work together with others, and move the technology forward. For today, we will be talking a little bit about what, are, what do I mean when I talk about embedded web applications, some challenges that we face developing them and testing them, and how browser automation can help dealing with those uh, challenges. So why web applications? Web applications, they are, like uh, my colleague Adrian mentioned in yesterday's talk, they are eating the, the world, they are growing everywhere because they enable fast development cycles. The developer can see what's happening quite fast, or, uh, even with the added complexity of today's JavaScript tooling, it's still very fast to develop new applications. It also enables fast deployment, like if you are using a remote server to serve the web application, you can just update the new version on the on the server instead of having to to deploy directly to the physical device uh, with a, either a new image or another kind. And it's also a larger ecosystem of both different tools, different technologies, a vibrant community of the developers, and it's growing. But in real life. Web applications, you write once and you run mostly anywhere. For example, we are back, it looks like in some ways we are back to the works better with browser days. And why does, does this happen? Because despite all the work in the standards, we have some engine differences. Blink, which enables Chrome-based uh, browsers, might support uh, different, have a different level of support for a given feature to WebKit versus Gecko. This is one of the most common kind of differences, especially when we have some new, shiny new standard that one of the engines might be a little bit more conservative to, to implement. 
But even if we get the same engine, we might have browser difference. Some of the, the features might be uh, implemented at the browser level. So this, we might have some cases where Chrome behaves different for Rave, that it behaves different for Edge. And in the case of WebKit, we might have Safari different from GNOME Web. And also we have the trouble with versioning because the, one system might be using a uh, different version with a different kind of level of implementation for a given feature. There's a great talk linked from the last year's Selenium conference by David Burns that talks how those kind of differences appear as browser engines are different from desktop browsers and mobile, uh, mobile browsers. Because it's also about hardware. Is the web application running on a desktop-like machine, on a tablet, on a, on a phone? The size of the screen. It's 4K, full HD. Are we using scale or native resolution? And what kind of interaction the web app will have? It will be using, it will be just a display. Will it be using mouse or gestures? And given that, what do I mean about embedded web applications? Just a question first. Who here already works with some kind of embedded web application? Please raise your hand. OK, for people. So embedded web application differs from generic web applications because it's not just a generic website that I have that's running on a generic mobile browser. Let's say just my sister just plows Chrome with some kind of stuff. I mean that an embedded web application, it will load some specific resources I can control. The, the user will not get the access to the URL bar and load some malware website. In some cases, I might even be loading the resources from locally in the machine to isolate from the external uh, network. And we control what kind of browser is running the, the web application. So we don't have to deal with some esoteric lab, different browsers and ages. And I think the most importantly, the web application can expand the browsers with new APIs to access some services from the system. But even with uh, these kind of differences, in real life, we might have different devices with different hardware capabilities. For example, different CPU, uh, different GPUs, even different CPUs, different screen sizes. For example, we are dealing in, with a, um, a project that the same application is expected to run in a IMX6 and IMX8 with very different GPUs, with different levels of OpenGL support. So this also brings some complexity to, to test. Also, we might have different browser versions because due to hardware capabilities or different device generations, we might have let's say, uh, an older uh, WebKit version running on an older version of the, the project, but it's still consuming the, the new version of the web application. But thankfully, this is still less variables than doing generic uh, website um, development. And as I mentioned, generic websites are usually sandboxed. The browser prevents them from Access, accessing the system only through some very specific APIs uh, defined by the storage groups. And even so, it's still very limited. Um, but embedded devices, sometimes they need to interact with the system. For example, um, we, have a pro we had a project, uh, project where the through a web application, you control the uh, a mixer, the uh, blender, for to, so you need to be able to make the web application interact with the system underneath. And 
as such, testing the web application in a live system is a must. We, there are cases where we need to be able to, to, to test the, live app, the web application in a running system. It's big, this differs from also from generic website development because usually generic testing tools for <coughs> websites, they kind of launch a sandbox at browser, just start it, load the page, run the tests, okay, it's over. And in some cases, the browser starting, the, the process of starting the browser might connect some systems, in some services in the system, and we need to be able to, to see it working on real life, especially on end-to-end -end tests for, for those applications. But then, how do we test a web application? First of all, there's a confusion between automation and testing. Usually when people talk about automation, they already may always lead to, lead to, to talk about testing. But automation is just a tool that we have to control a web browser. For example, we can use automation tools to crawl the web. To, it has been uh, used extensively in the past to, to to crawl the web for, let's say, getting some information. I remember some friend, uh, friend that had a project that was crawling some government sites for information. Um, we can use automation to field access, <laughs> for example, to do some boring stuff. But also, we can use automation to run in test steps, which is our focus here. And Originally, automation was designed in a way to mimic user actions. For example, navigate to a given URL, find the input for a given form with the valid name, enter the text John do to that input, then find the button with the label confirm, and click this button. Once you click this button, search for the message user created. So the, the, the whole, all, uh, most tools of the, the, the tooling of automation was created originally mimicking user uh, actions, and this led to some design des decisions that still reflect today. So in the beginning, it was about early 2000s, that the first real efforts uh, appeared, namely with the Selenium and the WebDriver projects, that after some time they merged together and become what we call today the Selenium WebDriver, that driven the development of those tools. And it was widely adopted but it's still kind of depending on some browser-specific uh, communication. Eventually, it became a W3C standard in 2018. So the browsers on held, on, only had to implement the, the standard and the tooling the, that sits on the client side could talk with, to any browser. And these web driver standards nowadays, it's supported by all major, uh, browsers, uh, engines, Chrome, WebKit, Firefox, and it's what we call today by WebDriver Classic. And it's uh, th this protocol that mediates the, the communication between the client, the, uh, the automation script or test script, and the browser. It's based on HTTP and it allows remote connections, which, which is interesting for the embedded use case. For example, we, the developer can be writing his automation scripts on the desktop, normally launching the, the scripts, and it will connect to a browser running on a embedded board like a Raspberry Pi or AIMX. And as it's based on HTTP, under the hood, the user sends comments to the browser, 
which sends the response, the HTTP response back to the user uh, with the result of the action. This worked well for some time, but just mimicking the user nowadays, it's, it's not enough. Why? Because for web applications, logic has been steadily moving to the front end. We have huge applications nowadays running on the browser instead of thin, just thin layers. And given the nature of JavaScript, a lot of asynchronous tasks and the synchronous task does, doesn't mix very well with the common the response scheme of the original um, web driver protocol. And polling is tricky in those cases because, for example, you send a command to do something in the web app, and doing this will trigger some task on the browser that will take an incremental time to, to finish. The automation script is waiting for some kind of signal, but the browser can push back. So the, the web driver class script will be polling, checking, is this happening, is this happening? So this introduces some kind of sampling error that, for example, you might be waiting for a specific value that might be in the past. You might kind of lose some exception that might have ha happened in, in, in the browser. So. The web driver classic has this kind of limitation. In the meantime, also, we have been developing new tools like the Chrome developer tools, the remote spectrum and WebKit, and those tools are very, very powerful. They enable true two-way communication with the browser because you open the for example, in WebKit with the remote inspector, you can open the inspector in a, in a different browser, targeting a, a given browser that you want to inspect, and it will react to things that happen in, in the browser. Um, so given those capabilities, we end up developing automation tools based on those protocols. And One of the most famous ones, uh, on top of those protocols, for example, we have the, um, I think it's the Puppeteer, that's based on Chrome uh, developer tools, which is the protocol that Chrome uses to do some debugging inside the Chrome-based browsers. And those kind of tools enable new capabilities that help it address those limitations of WebDriver Classic, but back again, they were some kind of browser-specific solutions. Based on those experiences, the industry sit together, and we are developing constantly the what we call the web driver by die protocol, by die for bidirectional, and it's already pretty well supported in Chrome and in the Chromium engine, uh, Chromium engine. And in, for Firefox and WebKit, we at Igalia have been working to add support for it. And it's progressing very well, should be implemented in the coming months. Under the hood, WebDriver by die, as I mentioned, it enables true two-way communications between the communication between the user and the browser. Because the user now can still send comments to the, to the browser, but the browser can push back information to the user script. And WebDriver by DICE implement this by using WebSockets instead of HTTP. It uses HTTP just to set up the, the, the connection. It's built on top of the experience with FabDriver Classic. So with FabDriver by die, we should be able to do whatever we could do with FabDriver Classic. And for example, we can still perform user actions. And like I said, clicking, getting information from the page, find the elements, so on. But also we can monitor the browser state without polling. 
which is the game changer in, in for testing for uh, automation. What can we do with this? We can monitor log messages. By the has uh, specified how the client can subscribe to events, and whenever there's a log message from the browser, for example, console.log message, or a JavaScript ex exception, you can assign some callbacks to be called from the client. Also, we can observe or don't changes in the web application, which is something that was also missing. As I mentioned, you had to be polling, now you can just react to to those DOM changes. And for testing, it's also uh, very interesting that we, by that, we can intercept and mock browser requests. So when the browser goes to start to fetch a network resource, by that allows you, WebDriver by that allows you to intercept that request, create a mock response, and the browser will use that mock response. So this, also helps um, uh, testing. And as it's based on WebDriver Classic, Baidai also allows you to connect to remote um, browsers running on other boards. And what about some browser automation tools? Because Baidai and WebDriver are just specification, just a protocol between the, those two. They, are, they have an implementation, a reference implementation inside the web platform repository called, it was formerly called WD Client, but it's just a thin layer on, on top. And given that we now have a specification for WebDriver, and by the way, it makes it easier for two developers to create new tools on top of those. The most famous one probably is Selenium, because it was, let's say, the one that started it, it all in the, in the past, and it deeply influenced the WebDriver Classic standard, due to this, it was the first one widely adopted, and it has implementations for JavaScript, Python, Java, Ruby, C Sharp, many languages, and Selenium is not just the Selenium WebDriver library. It's a huge project with a lot of the different tools, like the Selenium Manager for to, to handle different browsers. Um, and also the Selenium Grid, where you can assign different, different workers that can run the tests in parallel to reduce the size. The, the time that is spent running those tests. Another tool that's gained traction is what we call WebDriver IO. It's also based on the W3C WebDriver protocol, and it's written since the beginning in JavaScript, so it deeply, it's very well inter integrated with the, um, the let's say, the, the workflow of front-end developers. So it, it helps, it makes it easier for people doing the front-end development to also use it for automation. And it also, it, it has built-in support to run with the frameworks, behavior-driven developer frameworks like Cucumber, Mocha, and Jasmine. So it's also a plus that it's tightly integrated with the the front-end development environment. Another major player that's also gaining traction is Playwright, that it has some oranges in the puppeteer, so it's tied to the, kind of tied to the Chromium DevTools protocol. Nowadays, it's being developed by Microsoft, it's under active development. We at Igali work with Playwright, in the, especially in the supporting WebKit for it. It has a very interesting feature called AutoAids that before performing an action, the AutoAids features, it performs some checks 
in the in the given element. For example, when you go to click a button, it checks if the button is visible, if the button is enabled. If it's visible, it's not obscured by some kind of other element that could uh, receive the event. So it greatly helps uh, organizing the and reducing the flakiness of the, the tests. But unfortunately, Playwright, it depends on patched Firefox or WebKit versions. For the generic web app the developer, this might not be much an issue. But for if you, we are developing a, um, a, an embedded version of a WebKit-based browser, for example, we might have some downstream patches specific for the platform, and the WebKit patch for Playwright is quite huge. So it might add some complexity to, to testing. Um, now, we let's do a recap of a few points, main points of the, the talk. Embedded web applications, they usually run on more tightly controlled uh, scenarios than generic applica applications. So this greatly reduces the, the complexity uh, of testing. But at the same time, we need to test how it integrates with the, with the system. So we might need to, to run different kind of tests. We might connect it to, to uh, the system running on a board. It's not that we can just do some remote testing on the desktop of the front-end developer and everything is all right. But thankfully, especially the new protocol WebDriver by Dai has some features like the, bi bi the bidirectional uh, communication that enables deeply inspecting the, the, the status of the web application within the, the target browser and we can better test it. And that's it. So questions? Anyone? Good. Okay. Excuse me? Okay, the question is about maintenance of the automation scripts. How often they change? How well can we maintain them through the lifetime of the, the application? Uh, one of the, I think, one of the important things in this to maintain this is the coordination between the automation team and the people writing the web application. One one frequent uh, pain point, for example, is. Uh, the selectors used in the web application to identify the, 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 a button, uh, important, uh, a field that we want to test. Uh, especially nowadays with the, those frameworks that move elements in the DOM around all the time. For example, some people nowadays are a bit wary of uh, using XPath to, to select. So, the both teams need to agree in uh, how how are we going to label to identify the the main elements to be to be tested. There, are, I think there are some there are already starting to appear some AI powered tools. I think to identify to that visually we will identify the the elements, but it's, I think mainly it's something that need to be agreed upon between. Uh, the people writing the tests and people writing the, the front-end code. That's why probably using uh, the JavaScript-based automation tools will help when talking to people from writing the JavaScript-based web applications. It will make it easier to make the web developers help you with testing, identifying the, the, the points and such.
Okay, the question was um, about integrating those kind of uh, automation-based tests into the pipeline to, to make sure that you're taking account the, the, the duration of the test is to, to, to make sure it integrates well with the, the pipeline. Um, for the, this kind of, of tests, uh, the automation tools, I think they are, let's say, very agnostic in the sense of they can be integrated in various kinds of, of pipeline. Uh, for example, we are working on a project that will be using Cucumber to, to, to run the tests. So to describe the tests, I mean. So they'll be written in that uh, language and it, the steps, the test steps will be used. We are still defining the, the kind of the library that we be using either Selenium or uh, WebDrive I.O. or other, and in turn, those tests, the, those um, Cucumber tests, they can be integrated in other kind of uh, testing frameworks that the, the company use. The, I think the main point is that the, the way that WebDriver is designed, allowing to connect to, to a running browser, uh, to a remote browser, etc. It's always great flexibility to choosing the to, to using it with the tool that's already being used in, inside the the organization. Uh, I think the the next talk in this building will be exactly about some uh, testing tools to to integrate the uh, to be running on embedded system. So probably the the automation tools could be also be running on, on there. Anyone? Okay, so I think this is it. Thank you very much, and see you around. Good.